guys, Dennis Machina here. Thanks for hanging out. Today's reaction is another creepy pasta from Crypt TV. This is Suit Counters featuring Mr. Creepy Pasta. Now, with their last collaboration, it was so damn good. I can only imagine how good this one's going to be. As always, please go over and support all those who were involved in making this video. That goes from the person who wrote it, the artist, their narrator, Mr. Creepy Pasta, along with Crypt TV and a link to the original video. Those will all be in the description below. Before we go any further, please like, share, and subscribe because I put out new videos every single day and every little bit of support helps. And without any further ado, let go. Monsters are real. Ooh. The story you're about to hear I like this beginning. was attempted to be verified by internet students, but they Ooh. found only raised more questions. There Whoa. was no way Dylan really should have survived the car wreck. He was driving 30 miles above the speed limit, passing up cars like he was on a racetrack when he clipped the fender of a station wagon. Damn. At normal speeds, the accident might have been a bad one, but at nearly 95 miles per hour, Dylan's Camry might as well have been made out of paper mache. Oh. The elderly couple in the station wagon Dylan hit were killed upon impact with the concrete wall. Good lord! Their frail bones had shattered like glass and their organs had ruptured to the point where it would have been more appropriate to say that they had exploded inside their bodies. Jesus. The driver of the SUV caught in the aftermath of the Camry's rolling was paralyzed when the steering wheel of her car had rammed her so hard that it had crushed her spine. Oh, fuck. The worst of all was what happened to the baby <gasps> in the back seat of the SUV. Oh, no, the baby. It was too gruesome to account. Three fatalities. Two people paralyzed, and hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage. Jesus. But Dylan managed to pull himself from the wreckage with only a small scratch Man. on his left hand. All the luck. When I picked him up from the hospital, I was surprised to find that Dylan had no remorse. He was a spoiled rich kid willing man, to what an asshole. other driver but himself. I need a drink, man, he groaned as we pulled up to his house. Come on in, and let's get plastered. Oh, it was a good idea. But I knew Dylan had just survived a traumatic incident. Wait, he didn't get arrested by the cops for that? Isn't that like manslaughter? So I agreed to hang out for a while to keep an eye on him. We cracked open the a bottle of whiskey, and after a few drinks, he started opening up to me about the accident. When it's your time to go, he told me. Playing by the rules isn't going to save your life. These people were playing it safe, driving the speed limit, using their blinkers, just like they were supposed to. Guess what happened? They're dead. And the Guess what happened? Got Here win. comes the asshole ready to clip you. Play without a scratch. What about the one on your hand? I asked. I pointed to a peculiar crescent-shaped scratch on Dylan's left hand. Did you get that in the crack? Coming for you, bitch. Dylan seemed surprised by the question. He glanced at the little scratch on the back of his hand and shrugged again. Don't know. First time I noticed it. There was something uncanny about it that I found unsettling. I thought about how little Dylan seemed to care about the deaths that he had caused, and wondered what could compel a person to be so self-absorbed. Don't worry, he just deserts his coming his way. But I didn't. Instead, we both got stinking drunk, and I fell asleep on the couch. I'm not sure what time I passed out, but it was pretty late when I felt a hand on my shoulder. Uh-oh. Did you hear that? Dylan whispered. I think someone's in the house. I told him that he was just drunk and paranoid. Yeah, I watched him just go to sleep. start towards his bedroom. And I was just about to go back to sleep when I saw him stop suddenly. He jerked and fell on the floor and started scrambling backwards into the living room, trying desperately to get away from the horror that was in his bedroom. His face had gone white, frozen into a petrified scream. He looked as if he had seen a ghost. The creature came crawling into the living room. The most terrible thing I'd ever laid eyes on. It was a towering black monstrosity that wore a crown of bones. Wow. With gaping, empty eyes. That's really good. I was too terrified to run, too terrified to scream. It raised a long, bony hand towards Dylan. The artwork, not just the monster itself. You get what I mean. As if reaching out for him. Help! He screamed at me. Help me! Nope. But I just clenched my eyes shut and clenched No help on. coming for your ass. I was too afraid that if I moved, then it would turn on me next. And 
became the sounds of bones crunching. The sound of yeah. A tendon shredded. And then the screams too. Person the death. The screams of Durham, begging the creature for mercy, begging me for help. All the while, I kept my eyes shut as tight as possible and pretended not to hear. Him. The crazy part is, I'm not sure if I ignored his pleas out of fear for my own life, or because deep down I thought he deserved. That he was I'd go with the second one. Oh, just, just the noises of, of the bones cracking. Ugh. And after a few minutes, I worked up the courage to open my eyes. I was sure that when I did, I'd be greeted by that thing staring at me through its big, empty eye sockets, but the creature was gone. And all that remained was Dylan. Or rather, what was left of him on the living room floor. Oof. His body was a mangled mess. Intestines. Nearly all of Dylan's limbs had been snapped and his skull had been caved in. But what was worst of all was his face. The petrified scream had remained. A reminder of the horror we had both experienced. It looked like the car wreck he caused had finally caught up with him. Good. The wound on his hand, the peculiar crescent shape that had been his only injury from his earlier accident, had changed as well, and I found this to be the most curious thing of all. It had gone from a crescent to a perfect, bloodied circle. And it's now complete. I placed an anonymous call to the police and I drove back to my place. I'm worried they might trace Dylan's death back to me. But even though I was there, I don't know how they could convince themselves that I was the culprit. The way Dylan's body was disfigured, there's no way one person could have done that. It would take two tons of metal traveling at high speeds on the highway to maul a body in that way. Ha ha. That or maybe... just the angel of death taking back a soul that wasn't supposed to get a second chance. You know, there are so many times when I when it comes to different horror stories or horror movies where I root for the monster, I root for the villain, and that is certainly one of those times. Because I can't begin to tell you like how many times I read on the news that some asshole was driving and they were driving so recklessly that someone else got hurt and then nothing happened to them. I mean, I certainly don't wish death upon anybody, but considering this is a story, I was certainly rooting for the monster in this one. So what did you guys think? Did you, uh, were you rooting for the monster uh, just as I was? Uh, please leave a like if you enjoy my reaction. Share this video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Ring the notification bell because I put out new videos every single day. And I will see you guys next time.